everybody. Last week we heard about Moses and I'm just going to recap a little bit. You know how God had made promises to Abraham. He promised him the land of Canaan, which was up here. But then Abraham had a son Isaac and Isaac had a son Jacob and Jacob had a son Joseph who was sold to Egypt down here. And then there was a famine in the whole area. And so his family came from Canaan to Egypt to get food. And Joseph, who was second in command to the Pharaoh, invited them to come and live in Goshen in Egypt. And so all of Joseph's family, the descendants of Abraham, went to Egypt and they lived in Goshen and everything was good for a long time. But after many years, um, the memory of Joseph was gone. The Pharaoh didn't know who Joseph was and God's blessing, his promise that the children of Abraham would become plentiful as many, so many you couldn't count them, like the stars in the sky or the sand by the seashore. Um, that actually was happening. They had many, many children. In fact, there was more um, Israelites, descendants of Abraham than there were Egyptians. So we learned last week how the Pharaoh had made the Israelites, who they called Hebrews because they spoke the language Hebrew, he made them slaves and he worked them hard and they were still having children and so he tried to kill the baby boys but they just kept having children. So he had lots of workers but they were slaves and they were treated terribly and we heard last week how a baby boy was born to a family that had faith in God and his promises. And so they saved their son. When he was born, they did not follow the king's commandment and kill him by throwing him in the river. So in Hebrews, which is in the New Testament, we hear these verses about faith. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw that he was a goodly child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment, or at least not afraid enough to have their son killed. And then you heard last week how after three months, Moses' mother made a basket that was waterproof and put the baby in the river, but didn't throw him in the river. And the Pharaoh's own daughter came and found the baby and wanted him for her own. And we have another verse in Hebrews that says, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, that means when he was old enough to be considered a grown-up, when he was come to years, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction, that's difficulty and pain and trouble, he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of of sin for a season. That's a short period of time. He esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. So Moses, when he was grown up, he did not forget the teachings of his, his Hebrew mother. He remembered the promises that she taught him that God had given to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. He knew that they were supposed to eventually go back to Canaan, the land that God had promised them to live in, and that they wouldn't be slaves forever. He knew that, and he remembered that, and he chose to follow the God of his, his birth mother rather than the many idols and gods of his adopted mother, Pharaoh's daughter. And his life, his life would have been good. He grew up in the palace. He had riches. He had education. I'm sure he had a fantastic chariot. He had power. He had prestige. Everyone would have had to look up to him and bow to him. He had fancy clothing. He got to go to all the really amazing parties, I'm sure, that the Pharaoh threw. He had luxury and pleasure. All the things in life that people would search after generally, he already had those, but he was not content with that. He remembered the promises God had given to the family of his people 
the Israelites, the Hebrews. So he knew he was a Hebrew. He knew that he was of the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he believed that God loved his people and would someday take them back to Canaan. He heard stories of how cruel the Egyptians were to his people. But chances are he didn't really see it firsthand. He lived in the palace. He didn't live among the slaves and see what was really going on. But the Bible tells us that one day, when Moses was about 40 years old, he went out to see how things were for his people firsthand. And he saw an Egyptian beating an Israelite. And he was so upset. He looked around to see if anyone was watching. And then his indignation, his, his anger at the situation made him go and step in. And he actually killed the Egyptian who was beating the Hebrew. And he hid the body of the Egyptian in the sand. He thought nobody saw him. Then the next day, Moses went out again to see what was going on. And this time he saw two Hebrews fighting. And he couldn't understand that. He thought, these are two Hebrews. They're like brothers. Why would they be fighting with each other? He thought that was so wrong. And he went to the one who had sinned. He went to the one who was in the wrong. And he said, why are you fighting with your brother? And the guy who he spoke to was like, who are you? Who made you a judge over us? Are you going to kill me like you killed the Egyptian yesterday? <gasps> and, and Moses knew that, that people had talked, that people knew what he had done. He, the adopted son of the Pharaoh, the grandson of the Pharaoh, the adopted son of the Pharaoh's daughter, had killed an Egyptian for the sake of a slave. Well, then Moses was afraid. He knew that he would be in trouble. And sure enough, when Pharaoh heard about it, which he did, he wanted to kill Moses, but he didn't get a chance because Moses ran away. He ran to the wilderness. He went a long way. It would have taken a few days. I can show you in the map where he went. Okay. Here we are in Egypt, okay? And he ran through the wilderness and down in here in the wilderness um, where there was some mountains and um, some people living there. It was a place called Midian. Now Moses' intentions were good. When he killed the Egyptian, he was trying to do God's work for him. He wanted to rescue his family, his people, the Hebrews, from the cruelty of the Egyptians where they were beating them and making their lives so terrible. He wanted to help, but he went about it the wrong way. God had other plans for rescuing his people. He wasn't expecting Moses to go around killing people. Well, after days of travel, Moses arrived at Midian and he was resting by the well in the evening when seven girls came to, dwell, to draw water from the well because they were taking care of their father's sheep. Their father's name was Jethro and he obviously didn't have any sons and so all seven of his daughters worked together to take care of the flock of sheep for the family. But there was a problem. When they came to the well every day, I'm assuming every day by the sounds of things, when they came to the well every day, the other shepherds who were men would come after them, after they started trying to quickly draw the water and give it to all their sheep, the male shepherds, the men from the area would come and they would push them out of the way, get out of here, you girl, and they would draw water for their sheep and laugh at the girls until they were all done. All the shepherds in the whole area would water all their sheep, go away laughing, take their sheep, and then the girls could finish the job of watering their own sheep. And it took them a very long time. No matter how early they came, apparently they never got finished 
early. They were always late. They were the last ones to leave the well. Well, on this day, Moses, who had a strong sense of right and wrong and justice, he saw what was happening to these girls, and he thought that was wrong. So he stepped in, and he made all those other shepherds wait. Obviously, Moses was a man to be reckoned with. He must have been a strong, forceful man to be able to do the things that he did. So all the other shepherds had to wait that day while Moses drew all the water for all the girls' sheep. And then the girls went home. Well, when they got home, their father Jethro was so surprised. What on earth are you doing here so early, he said. And they told him all about the man at the well and how nice he was and what he had done for them. And their father said, well, what did you leave him there for? Invite him home for dinner. Quick, quick, go get him. So they ran out and they found Moses and they brought him home for supper or dinner. So Moses ended up staying with Jethro. Jethro was glad to have his help. And so he gave Moses, one of his daughters named Zipporah, to be his wife. And, and Moses took care of the sheep. Well, Moses stayed there for 40 years until he was 80 years old. Remember, he was 40 years old when he went out to see what was happening with the Hebrews in Egypt and killed the man. And then he ran to the wilderness and he was there for 40 more years. Now, remember that number 40 is an important number in the Bible. You'll see it over and over again. It's a number... Um, of judgment and um, you'll see it many times in the Bible so it's an important number to the Lord so while Moses was there he had two sons named Gershom and Eliezer and he was being a shepherd taking care of Jethro's sheep and one day um, he saw something pretty amazing now Moses had tried to help God, help God, deliver the Hebrew people in his own way, but God had other plans. The Bible says, without him, we can do nothing. He has his own ways of doing things and he can use us if we are willing to be used, but we can't just go ahead and think that we're gonna do his work for him. We can't think, oh, God needs us to do this for him and then go out to do it. That does, that's not the way it works. He tells us what he wants us to do. And sometimes it's not the way we want to do it. Not the thing we want to do. But if we love God, we will obey him and do what he wants in his way, in his time. So the Israelites, all this time, this 40 years that Moses was with Jethro, the Israelites were still crying out to God, asking him to help them from their bondage. And the men who had wanted to kill Moses, they had all died. And God heard the cries of his people and he remembered his promises that he had made to them. So one day, while Moses was watching the sheep, he saw this amazing thing. Wow, what is that? What is going on? It was a bush that was burning, but it wasn't burning up. It just stayed green and normal looking, but there was fire in it and on it all around it. So he thought, I'm going to go closer and take a better look at that. That's so amazing. I want to see what's happening. So he went closer and he heard someone calling his name, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. And it was God calling to him from out of the bush. And he said, don't come too close. Don't come any closer. The ground on which you're standing is holy ground. Take your shoes off. You're on holy ground. So when Moses heard that he quickly removed his shoes and God said, I am the God of your fathers. I am the God of Abraham and the God of Jacob and Isaac. And so when Moses realized who this was, he hid his face because he was afraid to look on God. And this is the way we should be. We need a fear and respect of God, not afraid of him like we're afraid he's going to hurt us, a fear of how big and amazing he is, an overwhelming respect and awe for him. Some people, they just think, oh, God is my friend, God is my buddy, and he is our friend, he loves us, but he's not our buddy. We need to 
have a proper fear and respect for him. He created us. He created the universe. He is amazing, overwhelmingly holy and righteous. And um, God is not honored when we don't respect him. When people are laughing and talking during times of prayer or when someone's teaching the Bible, that's disrespectful to God. Um, and so if we have a proper fear of God, a reverence for him, that will lead us to listen and worship and obey him in the right way. So Moses, he had this fear. And in, in all honesty, if any of us, even people that don't respect God, actually came anywhere close to him, they would be in fear and respect for him because he is so powerful that no one could resist that. Every time in the Bible where someone comes near God, they end up falling down on the ground, falling on their faces. Some of them kind of faint because our human bodies are too fragile and weak to come close to God. Well, out of the burning bush, God spoke to Moses and he said, I have seen the misery of my people and heard their cry for help. I know their sorrows. So he, he saw it, he heard it, he knew about their sorrow. And he said to Moses, I am come to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians. The time had finally come. He said, I've come to bring them to a good land, the land of Canaan, flowing with milk and honey, so filled with good things, good food for them to eat. And God said, I'm going to send you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt. Wait a minute, Egypt? Moses going back to Egypt, he ran away from there. He's afraid of Egypt. He's been all by himself in the desert for an awful long time. Just him and the sheep and then his wife and her family, but that was it. Moses said, but who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the people of Israel out of Egypt? He's kind of like, nah, hmm. I am not important and strong and yeah, no, not me. Who am I? Well, in some ways, this is good. God wants people who don't feel big in their own eyes. He wants people who aren't proud of themselves and think, oh yeah, I can I can totally handle that. You came to the right person. Yeah, I can do that. In fact, you don't even need to come with me because I can do this all by myself. Mm -hmm. Well, God does not use that kind of person. The Bible says in the New Testament, when I am weak, then he is strong. He uses people who don't think much of themselves, who aren't all puffed up and think they're able to do things. He uses people who don't think they can do it because then everything comes from him. All the strength and wisdom comes from God and he gets the glory. And they do things his way because they don't know any other way to do it. So this was a good thing that Moses was not big in his own eyes. He said, who am I that I should go do this? And God said, don't worry, certainly I will be with you. Well, can't get much better than that. The all-powerful God who created the universe would go with Moses and help him. Okay, well, this is good. And Moses said, yeah, but when I tell the children of Israel that the God of their father sent me, they'll ask, well, what's his name? And what will I tell them? And God said, I am that I am. Tell them I am has sent you. Well, I am is like present tense. I exist. And God always exists. He was before anything else existed. He's the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. He will always be the eternal one. So he called himself, I am. And Moses said, well, but they won't believe me. They won't listen to me. <laughs> and God said, well, what do you have in your hand? And Moses, he was a shepherd, so he had a rod in his hand to guide the sheep. And he said, 
God said, throw it on the ground. So Moses threw it on the ground and the rod turned into a big snake, the kind that could kill somebody. And then God said to Moses, grab it by the tail. Well, you wouldn't normally grab a snake by the tail. It can turn around and get you. But he did what God said and it turned back into a rod again. <coughs> then God told him to do something else. He said, put your hand in your bosom, in your shirt. <coughs> and he took it out again and it was covered with leprosy, that horrible disease where your skin turns all white and it's fatal and everyone was afraid of it. And God said, now put it back in. And he put it in and came out. Oh, it was all healthy again. It was perfectly fine. <coughs> <clears throat> and God told Moses, these signs will make them believe. And he said, if they don't listen to those, there's one more thing you can do. You can take a cup of water out of the river and pour it on the, on the land and it will turn to blood. And then they will believe. So he gave him three signs. <clears throat> but Moses wasn't done yet. He said, oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent. I can't speak well. I am slow of speech. I have a slow tongue. And God said, oh, Moses, who made your mouth? Go and I will be with your mouth and teach you what to say. And Moses was not done yet. He said, this was his fifth excuse, or his fifth protest. He said, please go send somebody else. And God was angry. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. He said, <clears throat> he didn't want someone else. He chose Moses. And he said, your brother Aaron can speak well. He will come to meet you when you get to Egypt. And you will tell him what to say, and I will be with both of you. So go, take your rod, and do the signs I showed you. Just go. So Moses went. He told Jethro, his father-in-law, that he needed to go to Egypt to see his people. And, and Jethro said, go in peace. So Moses, he wasn't sure about this job God had for him. He protested five times but God wanted him to go. He had a plan for him. God wanted him to do things his way and he already knew how things were gonna go. So Moses packed up his sons and his wife and they all headed off to Egypt. And we will find out next week what happened when he got there. <laughs>